Hi there. This is the third of three videos relating to the comparison of variable and absorption costing in this in-class problem. So we're going to continue on with it. We've already done the first requirement to determine the variable and absorption costing income. So now we're going to explain the difference between the variable and absorption costing incomes that we just calculated. So if you see here in the absorption costing income, we had operating income in 2019 of 420,533 and a loss in 2020 of 604,170. At the same time, we had an operating income under variable costing in 2019 of, of 87,200 and a loss of 507,200. So what we're going to do essentially is look at reconciling and comparing these differences in both of these years. And what we'll see is that the explanation for the difference is solely due to the movement of fixed costs in and out of inventory. So here we've got a template in front of us, and you can do this in one of two ways. You could start with the absorption income and then reconcile to the variable costing income or the other way around, which I'll illustrate just after this one. So we'll do this in the order we did the question. We'll start with absorption costing income. We know that was 420,533, and we know that the variable costing income was 87,200. Well, if we calculate the difference between those two, that's 333,333. Well, as it turns out, the way to go from absorption to variable costing is to start with your absorption costing. And then what we do is we add fixed costs in beginning inventory. Now we know that we started this problem with zero units in beginning inventory. So that's why we have no units in beginning inventory. And then we subtract the fixed costs in ending inventory. So in 2019, the fixed costs in ending inventory. So in 2019, the fixed costs in ending inventory is calculated as the 20,000 units in ending inventory times the fixed cost rate of 16.667. You should go back and review where that came from, but that's how we get 333,333. So if we take 420,000 and then subtract the fixed cost in ending inventory, remember under variable costing, all fixed costs are expense as period costs. And so what we have to do then is lower the income by the amount of fixed costs that would be expensed under variable costing. And we end up with 87,200. Now we'll look at 2020. Again, we, under absorption costing, we had a loss of 604,170, and under variable costing, a loss of 507,200. Mathematically, that's a difference of 96,970. And what we do is we start with our 604,170. We add the fixed costs in beginning inventory, which is the fixed cost in ending inventory from the previous year, which is also calculated at 20,000 units times 1667, the fixed cost rate. And then we subtract the fixed cost in ending inventory in 2020. Recall that there were 10,000 units in ending inventory and the fixed cost rate for 2020 is $23.636. So this gives us 236,663. When we add altogether 604,170 loss, add back the fixed costs that were in beginning inventory, subtract the fixed costs in ending inventory that would be expensed under variable costing, gives us 507,200. And of course, if we just look at these two items together, guess what they add up to? The difference of 96,000. 970. If you wanted to look at it the other way and start with variable costing, you'd start with 87,200. Under this approach, it's the reversed. You'll subtract the fixed costs in beginning inventory, in this case is zero, and then you will add the fixed costs in ending inventory of 333,333 to give you 420,000 533 in absorption costing income. The absorption income is higher because by adding inventory, going from zero units to 20,000 units in inventory, you are pulling from the income statement onto the balance sheet, absorbing fixed costs of 333, 333. So the absorption income is higher. And remember the rule of thumb that we had seen before is if production is greater than sales, then the absorption income is greater than the variable costing income. Well, if we look at 2020, this will be very similar. We have variable costing loss of 507,200. We subtract the, 300, the 300, 
and 33, 333. And then we add the fixed costs and ending inventory of 236, 363 to give us 604,170 loss. In this case here, production is less than sales. And when you have that, the absorption income is lower than the variable income. And that's what we have here. Because if your sales is more than you produce, then you have to draw down your inventory from the balance sheet. And then those costs, those fixed costs that were uh, absorbed and stored into inventory now have to be expensed, resulting in a lower income. And that's how you reconcile between variable and absorption costing.